Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I want to talk to you about something that you're going to need pretty much in every app, which is a uh, menu. Now, desktop menu is pretty easy to do, just a flex box. But um, if you think about a mobile menu, uh, this little thing with the hamburger, it's a little bit uh, trickier. And there's a lot of ways of doing that. You can use divs, you can use the modal. Uh, today what I want to show you is that there's actually a much simpler way, a uh, new way of doing this. And that better way is a popover. So the new, if we look at caniuse.com, and see that their new popover API has uh, pretty good support. And if you haven't seen popover before, I could give you a uh, short example. Like if we go into the REPL here, um, all the popover is, is it's, it's any element that has an attribute uh, popover like that. And whatever content you place in there will only be displayed when you show or will be displayed in sort of a modal kind of like view. So let's say. Uh, You see nothing is displayed, but if we um, inspect this, I can use JavaScript to, to make this uh, show it. So we can say, uh, I don't know if you know the trick, dollar zero, that's, that's the current uh, selected element. And we'll say show popover. If we call that, you see that it uh, shows up. And, we can, and likewise, there's a hide um, as well. Say hide popover. And there's even a toggle popover. That's not the only way you can use a popover. You can also use it without JavaScript. So imagine that we have here a button uh, called open. We can use a tar we can target the, the popover by using a popover target and giving the name, uh, giving the ID. So we'll have to set an ID here. Let's call this the menu. Use that as the popover target. And then we will have, we have to say what action we want to do. We want to hide it, do we want to show it, do we want to toggle it. Let's uh, pop over. Target action. So now we click it, it will show up. And we can use the same thing to close it. We can just copy that, put that in the popover, have a close button here. Close, and then this will be hide. Now we can close it. And there's also a backdrop, which you're not seeing right now, but you can style the backdrop um, by using a style tag and then just using the Persuado class colon colon uh, backdrop. So imagine that we have a backdrop that's red. Or, you know, we'll make some opacity black, but with, let's say, somewhat opaque, somewhat transparent. You see? And so it's pretty easy to use without, uh, like, a lot of the shenanigans we'd have to do in the past. So now let me show you how to set this up uh, with in a real app with open props. Okay, so here I am in a basically uh, empty SvelteKit project where all I did was I created a layout where I have a bunch of menus here. So this is a data bound uh, Flexbox. And what I did is I also have a button, that uh, menu uh, button that only shows what's responsive. So the button shows by default. And then when you get to the MD breakpoint, it's, it shows this uh, horizontal menu. Um, if you need to, if you want to know how to set up uh, open props, you can check my last video where I kind of showed how to set that all up. So let's go in here and we will uh, add our drop down menu so that when we click on this button, um, the menu comes down. So we'll go into the layout. Um, and what we'll do is we will add a new div. I'm going to go down here um, in my header. I'll add a new div, which will be the popover. And inside the popover, we're going to have like a link, a menu, a bunch of menus. So we can do the same thing we did on the, on the header, or just uh, iterating through the uh, menus, like that. Now you obviously you'll see nothing because uh, the popover is hidden by default. So let's wire up the, uh, the button, this button here, the hamburger, to open the popover. So what we'll do is like we did before in the repo, we'll just say uh, popover target equals, and we need to name an ID, we'll call this the menu. menu. And the popover action, target action will be open. Now we click that, and we see this thing uh, pop up over here on top. Um, so now we could uh, start uh, styling the style up this uh, popover a bit. So I'll go down to the styles, page down a bit. Okay. Go to the bottom here. We'll add a style the popover, so we target the element that has the attribute popover. And 
first thing that we want to do is we will add a border. And let's add a border radius. And what else can we do? We should probably add a box shadow. And we should probably also style the backdrop while we're at it. Make it uh, that. You can also add a backdrop filter, which is nice. And backdrop filter, just blur the background slightly. 4px blur. Uh, maybe that's too much. We'll go to two. Okay, that looks fine. Let's also set the placement. What I want to do is I want to have it uh, just below the top, just a bit. So what I'll do is I'll use inset, and we'll say that it should be um, I don't know 10 pixels from the top of the screen. Um, it should be 10 pixels from the uh, right, zero on the bottom, or maybe auto is probably better, and then uh, 10 pixels on the left. Do that. Now let's uh, let's adjust the width to make it as as wide as possible. So we'll say width should be should be uh, one hundred uh, vertical width minus the um, the inset size. So the inset's ten pixels on each side, so uh, twenty pixels like that. Okay, cool. I only set the links to be to go uh, downwards. So I'll add a style for the nav. We'll just say display flex uh, flex direction will be top. And that's a little bit better. Add a bit of gap. So that looks a bit too much, maybe. Um, we can add some padding also here. That's a bit better. Uh, maybe the border can be a bit lighter. Maybe the font size could be a bit larger. Okay, that looks good. We can add a borders also. Um, under the, each uh, link, we can have, uh, let's say, a border. That's a bit too strong. Later, and probably the last uh, child shouldn't have any uh, borders at all. So we'll say last child. Just copy this and set it to none. That's good. We're able to click and open it, and we can click uh, on the backdrop to dismiss it. But we probably should also have a close button. So let's do that too. Um, what I'll do is I'll go back to the uh, popover. And what we'll do is we will add a button here. We can use we can reuse what we have for the uh, hamburger. I'll copy that. And this will be close button. And the menu will just be pop over target menu. Pop over target action here will be high. And let's uh, adjust the icon. So I'm using uh, Iconify Svelte. So I'll just go to Iconify to find an icon. Iconify. Let's find a close icon. Okay, it should work. Let's do this one. Fine, copy that. And we'll change the icon. Go back and let's see what happens. And now we see we have the close icon. So let's just place it over here on the right. To do that, um, I could uh, adjust the popover to use relative to use uh, relative positioning here. So I will say I'll position my popover uh, relative. This way we can, um, we can hit that uh, close button to make the uh, position to be on the right top. So um, inset uh, top will be you know, five, let's try 10 pixels. Right will be 10 pixels and then auto, auto. And position absolute. Okay, that looks good. Maybe I can make this a bit more. 
probably fix the padding up there even more. And looking pretty good. And now if we click that, it closes. So open and close. So now, now we'll look at uh, doing animation. So I want to style two things. I want to style the backdrop entrance, and I want to style the popover entrance. So let's style the backdrop entrance first. I'll just find the backdrop here in my CSS. What we'll do is we'll, we'll start off with an opacity of zero because we want to fade in. So we're going to fade in from zero. And we'll set an animation here. We'll use open props. We'll say animation fade in. We want to hold the, as, when, it, when it goes from zero to one, we want to hold the opacity at one. So we'll say forwards. And that should already be working now. Yeah, so that's already fading in. We can adjust the duration slightly. So let's just set the duration here. Maybe we'll say 0 0.3 seconds, and we'll, we'll adjust the easing function. So we'll say timing function. Ease in, out, break. Now it should fade in slightly. Great. So similar idea for the uh, popover entrance. So there's a, there's a CSS class called popover open, which we can use. Like that. that will allow us to target when the popover opens. And we'll copy the same animation code we have here, pretty much. And we'll make some changes. So I think one thing we can do is we should, add, we should have it come like slide down. So I'll copy this one. And it will be slide in down. Like that. There we go. It slides in. Maybe uh, one of the things we could probably do is have it first fade in a little and then um, come down. So we can stagger it a bit. So we'll say animation delay. Put a slight delay in there. Let's say one. Yeah, so it starts fading in. Maybe that can be increased a bit. Sorry, I forgot to say seconds. Yeah, that looks better. There we go. So as you can see, there's a really easy solution, which is mostly HTML and CSS. Uh, with open props, we get a little bit of animation and the vars that make it super easy to set up this kind of thing. No divs, no modals hurt uh, in the process. So that's it for this one. Um, I'll leave an uh, example code in the, in the, in the comments below. Um, let me know if you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.